bring it up to six inches here. We'll just fold right over there. You know, this is basically what we have. We got a OSB subfloor, two by four curb, and the contractor left the dent shield up a good, let me just measure this, uh, seven inches up off of the subfloor. So we're gonna wrap up our pan liner. And again, we got dent shield on the walls. We're gonna end up floating this. So stay tuned, there'll be other videos showing how we prep the rest of this stuff. But for the pan liner, we're gonna get ready to go. We're gonna get our pre-slope in. Uh, what we're using for our pre-slope is this facet mortar mix. With this rapid set mortar mix, it's really good because you can work on it almost right away. 15 minutes, I'll be able to knock on this stuff. Here's the tar paper. I probably don't need to put this tar paper down. Uh, it's not waterproofing or anything. It's just gonna keep the, the moisture from sucking into the plywood. And also, when they tear this thing out in 100 years, it'll be easier. So, the purpose of the pre-slope is just so that the pan liner has slope on it. It doesn't really need to be like perfect, uh, but I get it pretty close. And uh, I also don't reinforce it. I don't put wire or lath into the, the pre-slope. I just don't want anything to compress or move. I don't really need it. Even if it did happen to crack, it's not a big deal. It's gonna be under that pan liner. Yeah, so these, these Odie's Caspers are uh, two-part drain. There's the weep holes. It's really important to make sure that you keep these weep holes clean. So there's, there's the weep holes right there. We'll take really uh, special precaution to keep these clean once we do the, the flow. Put these nails in here just to kind of keep it in place. While use like plastic sheeting or anything just as like a barrier to keep that mud from bonding to the wood. And this mud is a trip. It's it's gonna set up really fast. So so it's ready. This is ready to dump out. Go ahead and... So that's probably a little stiff, Zach. Um, again, you're gonna trip out how fast this, this mud sets up. There you go, Zach. You can go ahead and get the other one going. <laughs> I was going to say I can give it a whip because it sat there. Uh, yeah, the next one much looser, Zach, please. So what I'm doing here with the pre-slope is I'm using I'm using the bottom 2x4 right here as a guide. So that's an inch and a half. I need three quarters. So I'm going to make sure that I'm at least halfway up this 2x4 on the perimeter. And go, go up to zero at the bottom flange. I can just screed right off of that. Just about halfway, maybe a little bit higher than halfway on the bottom plate of that 2x4. And it always seems to work out that that's about two bags of mortar. So you could also use Type S mortar, just regular Type S. You know, that stuff goes for about six bucks a bag at Home Depot. And you don't have to worry about like the, the time critical factor and all of that stuff. 
Um, but you would just need to wait till the next day to, to get on it. The reason why we're using this fast setting is we're gonna get this pan, this pan liner in right away. I don't wanna wait till the next day. So again, I'm not being super, super picky with this float. I'm just kinda, I'll, I'll use a, an edge here just to make sure I got a good fall going to the drain. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a, the consistency I like to have it. All right, so yeah, I got this half done. Now I just do the same thing on this half. And yeah, that's, that's the consistency I like. <laughs> Much easier to, to spread around. This is just a, a, a three foot L edge and they're nice to have. You can buy them in a set. Maybe I'll try to put a link to something where you can, you can buy them. They come in like a five and a half and then a four foot and a three foot and a two foot. I think there's a two and a half and then an 18 inch, but different sizes. But you could also just use like, you could use a level. You could also use a, uh, you know, stick two by four. But I'm just gonna kind of give myself the, the little bit of slope here. And I probably should have taped over this because I just got some mud right over my hole here. You can get a little bit of mud in that bolt hole. So yeah, some blue tape over those holes would have been a, a good idea. So that looks pretty good for the initial, initial trowel. I'm just going to let it set up a little bit more. Again, this side is pretty much set up. This side is a little, little goopy still. Yeah, so this, this part's really important. When you, when you bring your pre-slope up to the bottom flange, you wanna make sure that everything is going in a, a, you know, a slope towards. One of the biggest mistakes when people don't do a pre-slope is that the, the bottom flange is sitting up, you know, even like an eighth or a quarter inch above the subfloor and then that pan liner comes and then it goes uphill. So all of that is just gonna sit in water, get mold, get nasty. You know, these systems are designed for the water to hit that pan liner and be able to shed down through the weep holes. So that took about 15 minutes to get this pre-slope down. 
I'm going to let it set up here for about five minutes. Uh, we'll get the pan liner cut and get this pan liner ready to go in. While I'm letting this pre-slope set up, I'm going to get my measurement for the pan liner. So the pan liners usually come in four, five, and six foot rolls. I might have been able to get away with a four, we'll see, but I, I use the five foot roll. I think it goes for about like $8 a lineal foot at Home Depot. So anyways, the four foot's obviously going to be cheaper than the five and the six foot. Home Depot, they only have four foot and five foot width rolls. So I always get the five and figure the lineal footage going this way. So I'm going to take my measurements. I'm going to call that five and a half inches. Here I got 32, so that's 37 and a half, 41, 41, three and a half, 44 and a half, plus four is 48 and a half. So actually a four foot pan liner would have been just about perfect. It would have been a little short. Yeah, so 48 is that way. And then lengthwise, we're gonna be uh, 60 inches plus, should be five and a half or five and a half. Yeah, so 11, so 60, 71. Give this some time to set up. I can walk on this already. This is a nice solid pre-slope. The first thing we want to do, and this is another important step that some people forego, is uh, we got to get caulking, caulking in on the bottom flange here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these bolts, I'm going to thread these bolts back in, and you'll see in a second why I am doing this. So thread your bolts back in, and again, this can be a PVC drain. The PVC ones or ABS ones are usually have four holes in them. The cast irons just have the, the three bolts. So I'm just getting the bolts threaded in there. This MS polymer sealant, this is a rapid set brand. It's cheap, get it at Home Depot, nine bucks. You can... So I'm gonna put a good, a good bead here. I'm actually going to do two. I like to do kind of two rings here. One on the inside and one on the outside. What this, what this sealant is going to do, and again, some people don't do it, but what this does is if, if the drain over, ever overflows, it won't back up and under the pan liner. So it seals the pan liner to the bottom flange. Now I got my pan liner. And what these, what these bolts also do, what these bolts do is they will tent up the pan liner. So as I'm shifting it around, it's gonna keep it from, you know, smearing that caulking around. So that's why I have those bolts in tented up. And I'll also be able to find them. And 
these are just, we call them hospital folds. So the pan liner just tucks in on itself to form a nice 90 degree hole. You do not want to cut anything right here. And I'm just going to do one temporary staple just to kind of hold this in place. Because I'll, I'll pull it back off if I need to adjust. Come over to this side and do the same thing. We're looking pretty good, so I'm going to add a couple more staples just at the very top. Yeah, so you can see here I have it folded up the wall and I'm just going to tuck, tuck it back in behind and crease it so that I have a nice 90 degree fold just like that. So that's the fold. Just folds back on itself. And so, put a staple right in here. You don't want to do any staples or fasteners below two inches above the curb. That's a rule. And I know some of you guys are going to say uh, you're supposed to use screws for the pan liner. I mean, these are galvanized. These are galvanized three inch staples. They sink really deep. I mean, if I were to try to pull this pan liner off, it's actually pretty hard. So I, um, I feel really confident with the staples I just do. And once the wall board goes on, this is all pinned in. It's not like it's gonna come out. But if you wanted to do screws or roofing nails or whatever, that's fine. And yes, it really is. So before I get too far, I'm gonna check this side, get this, this side stapled in. So I'm feeling good. I'm going to start, start stapling. Okay, so once I get my, my two corners folded and stapled up, tacked in, uh, I don't even have these, these outside folds. I don't even have these outside folds done or anything. Uh, since that, that sealant's in here and I don't want it to cure before I get everything done, I can feel these bolts. Um, I can feel these bolts and you can even push on them to see an indention so I know exactly where that hole is. So I'm going to cut um, two, little, two little slits just big enough for that uh, pan liner to stretch over, over the bolt hole. Just like that. I'm just cutting a little, little cross there. So I just cut that cross and the liner will pop right over the bolts. So now I can feel that liner squish in to the sealant. And I can even cut this out. So I can feel with, with my knife, I can feel where the edge of that metal is. That cast iron, or if this was plastic, obviously it would be ABS. And so, You'll see, I like to make sure, I like to cut it so that I can see the sealant actually squish down. And now I know I got a really good seal between that bottom flange and the pan liner. Now I can take my screws out.
back over there. go back on and now the drain is, is fixed okay so here come here comes the tricky fold this fold is uh, I have my way of doing it I don't know other people probably have their way of doing it but I basically start with the hospital fold just like that and then I'm gonna cut fold over like that. So you see now I have a fold. I will have to cut a little bit off of this. Cut the extra off here. We have these preformed corners. These damp corners, because I've seen a lot of guys, they just leave it like this and they leave this part of the, the curve unprotected. I'm not going to name any names, but you will find videos on YouTube with that feature. And code does state that two inches above the dam needs to be waterproofed. So I use these, these hand liner corners and put them in like that and then I fold it over. So it's a little tricky and I don't know if Odie, they, they're kind of vague in their instructions on how to do this, but this is the way I do it. So Zach, can you hand me the adhesive? This is X15 hand liner adhesive. And this is what makes, you know, if you had to seam together, you could seam together one of these, these liners, but it makes the dam corners stick to the pan liner material, the PVC. I'm just going to group this stuff on here. The adhesive on both sides, and then this guy is going to stick right onto here, nice and tight. And then, uh, then I take the fold and put it back on there, and try not to get goop all over me. But yeah, it goes just like that. So it kind of goes into the fold. Staple. side here and you can kind of adjust these you know the it takes a while for this glue to set up so you can you can adjust them but they they definitely it will harden up just cut the extra off of there now this side we'll do the same thing 
Yeah, I got, got that. It's gonna go right in there, right before the fold. If you want these to stick a little sooner, you can you can put it on and then peel it off, and that kind of gets some air in it. But I kind of like them to have some adjusting time. So yeah, so now this guy will just fold right over there, and we're gonna be able to staple it. Cut this. I should have a better plate on here. All under here, nice and tight. And a beautiful little corner. or penetrations do not now that this is done do not screw anything into the curb I'm going to show you how how we float these without putting any penetrations in there but you notice I still have this little this little dealy here uh, bare wood I do want to cover that Cut my damn quarter like that and just put another one here. That guy will go right in there. And I'll do the same thing to this corner and then we're all done. All right, so there you have it. There you got a nice, nice pan liner job. Pretty economical way of doing things. It's not the easiest waterproofing method. I think there's other methods out there that are, are easier to accomplish. Uh, but if you're a professional and you've been doing it a long time, this is a good way to go. This is a way I learned how to do shower pans. So I'm pretty good at it. But if you're watching this video and you're a DIYer, uh, consider other methods because this, this takes a while to learn and get right one little mistake and you're in big trouble. I see a lot of failed shower pan installations where people think they can just cover with red guard. They'll, they'll screw into this and it causes all kinds of issues. So that's just my two cents, you know, but you know, pan liners when done correctly do perform really well. It's just that they're not done correctly that often. So, um, at least, at least, from do-it-yourselfers and, and people with not a lot of experience. So I hope you got something out of this video. I'm really glad you were here along for the ride with me today. And I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.